Okay, so this marks a significant shift in the course. Um, the second half of this course is quite a bit different than the first. First half of the course is a typical theory course. What, what is this thing? How does this thing work? Let's learn about it. The second half of this course is very much just a math course. Okay, we're going to be doing math from this point on. So the shift in the material also requires a shift in the method of delivery. I don't have any PowerPoint presentations for the material for the rest of the course. Um, it's, it's math, and so we just we do the math on the board. And so now we will shift to this video uh, lesson, and I will be here with my whiteboard, and we'll be doing lots of math. So what kind of math specifically? It's all trigonometry, okay? And even within trigonometry, we can narrow it down to right angle triangles okay here's a little bit of a hint for the rest of the course anytime I ask you a question how do we do the math to calculate whatever it might be we're talking about the answer is draw a right angle triangle and figure out the numbers okay so without going into the specifics of the theory and and the purpose of the right angle triangle we need to start with understanding a triangle this week's gonna be a little bit busy too guys I'm gonna have a handful of different videos hopefully they'll be nice and short so instead of just one long 45 minute PowerPoint presentation there will be a handful of hopefully about 15 minute videos okay so we've got a number of different items to knock off this week to sort of lead us up to what the rest of the course is going to uh, going to cover but let's start right here right angle triangle so what is a right angle triangle quite simply a right angle triangle is any triangle which contains a right angle, which means that angle is what? 90 degrees, okay? Beyond that, we have two other triangles, okay? One of them, and it doesn't matter which one, we have to make a decision. We're going to pick one, and we're going to consider it our angle of interest, okay? So the angle of interest, we will call angle theta. And the angle theta is what we want to calculate, okay? Now, the angle theta plus the other angle adds up to 90 degrees, okay? So these two angles add up to 90 degrees plus the right angle is 90 degrees. 90 plus 90 equals 180 degrees. So the inside angles of any triangle, not just a right angle triangle, but the inside angles of any, actually that's not true, scratch that, of a right angle triangle, it is 180 degrees, okay? Maybe useful for solving um, numbers down the road, okay? The point is the angle theta is a really important one for us, okay? And then, of course, a triangle has three sides, and we can identify these three sides. Okay, the first side I wanna to point to is this one over here, which is across from the 90 degree, the right angle, okay? And the term for this side of a right angle triangle is hypotenuse. Looks like I need to get some new whiteboard markers. I wonder if blue's gonna work better. The hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse, oh that works better. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle. Okay, across from the right angle. And there's an important thing to know about a hypotenuse. I'm sure this is all review for you guys. I hope this is review for you guys. Something important about the hypotenuse, it is always the longest side. Okay, the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So when you are doing the math and checking your work, that's a piece of information, that's a detail that you want to watch for. Make sure that that's true. If that's not true, you've done something wrong. Okay? Next side I want to refer to, so this is the hypotenuse. Okay, this side down here is what we call the adjacent. Okay, so the adjacent
the definition for the adjacent, how do we find it? How do we recognize it? We say that the adjacent with the hypotenuse makes the angle theta. And I'll write it out this time so you can see it. Angle theta. Okay, so the angle theta is created by two lines, the hypotenuse and this line that we call the adjacent. Okay, so the adjacent is adjacent to the angle theta. Okay, and finally, the third side of a right angle triangle is the opposite. Okay, and the opposite, quite simply, is opposite. Or we could say across from. Okay, opposite the angle theta. Okay, so the hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle, the right angle, and the opposite is across from the angle theta. Okay, so just to, to show the final point here, understand that if I decided to call this the angle theta, okay, and I might have chosen to do that, this is still the hypotenuse. You look at the definition of a hypotenuse, it's across from the right angle and always the longest side. That's true no matter which uh, angle we choose to call the angle theta, which is our angle of interest in this right angle triangle. But now, this side of the right angle triangle gets relabeled as the opposite, and this side gets relabeled as the adjacent. Okay, so if we change the angle theta, it changes the labeling of the opposite and the adjacent. Okay, so there's our right angle triangle. The definition, those are our labels for our three angles and our three sides. Next, let's get to the math. We good here? You can freeze it if you need to. Moving on. Now that you're done writing all that down and you have no longer paused in my video, we can carry on. Okay, and the next thing we need to talk about is what's referred to as the ratio ratio of sides. Okay, so there's a particular relationship for all right angle triangles. Okay, there's a particular relationship. And to remember how this works, we use the term Sokatoa. So ka Okay. To determine the ratio of sides, we use some functions called sine, cos, and tan. And in another video, I'm going to talk about sine, cos, and tan a little bit about exactly what they mean and what they're calculating. But let's just get through the math for right now. Okay. So we're first going to focus on the letters SOH, and the S is for sine, so the sine function of the angle theta. Okay, so the sine of the angle theta, whatever this function sine is, we'll figure that out in the next video. The sine of the angle theta is equal to O and H, means the opposite, this is the opposite over here, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, now I don't know if last term Pete showed you the triangles to use to, to use Ohm's law. Did you guys do that? Let me do a triangle here. And we can break the triangle up into three pace, place, three parts. And we can say that using Ohm's law, the current equals the voltage over the resistance. Okay, and if you cover up the voltage, the voltage is equal to I times R. If you cover up the current, it's equal to E over R, and if you cover up the R, it's equal to E over I. Okay, a nice easy way to remember the equation. Okay, if, if algebra is not your strong point, here we are working on trigonometry, don't forget your algebra, but if that's not your strong point, we can do the same thing here. Break our triangle up into three parts, 
and it's the sine of the angle theta. I don't have room, so I'll just put sine equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, there it is. There's a triangle. Okay, I'm going to definitely run out of room here. But let's try the second part of Sokotoa. So C stands for cos, and the cos of the angle theta equals AH, which is the adjacent, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. We can make a triangle here, break it into three parts. We have the cos equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And finally, let's look at Toa, the third part of Soka Toa, and T is now for the tan function, and the tan of the angle theta equals OA, opposite over adjacent. One last triangle. Tan O over A, Soka Toa. Okay? So, there are our three functions, sine, cos, and tan, and how the angle relates to the ratio between a couple of the sides. Okay, I'll get into the video later, but just quickly, let's look at this. So, if the angle is small, let's look at tan, for example, the, the relationship between the opposite and the adjacent. If we have a really small angle, our triangle looks like this. Okay. As a result, our adjacent is a fairly big number and our opposite is a very small number. So that's how the angle affects the ratio of the sides. On the other hand, if that angle is very large, our triangle looks like this. There's our angle theta, here's our opposite, here's our adjacent. Now, with an angle that's up very close to 90 degrees, say it's 88 or 89 degrees, we have a very, very small value for the adjacent and a very, very large value for the opposite. And so that's what these three equations are talking about, is how can we relate a couple of the sides to our angle when it's somewhere between zero degrees, close to zero degrees, and up approaching 90 degrees. Okay, so our, 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 the shape of our triangle changes and the length of our sides, the ratio, how they compare to one another changes as well. I mean, we don't know the actual numbers, right? It could be, now that I was interrupted, I've lost my train of thought. What was I saying? I was talking about the ratio between, oh, I know what I was about to say. So I don't know whether these are values that are in the hundreds or thousands or ones or tens. Okay, so in, in terms of the scale of the triangle, we don't know. Okay, it's all about the ratio, the relationship between the opposite and the adjacent and of course, sine and cos take into account the hypotenuse as well. And we can compare a couple of sides. A couple of sides. Okay, one last thought, we're done the introductory math stuff. So, that is the ratio of sides, the relationship between the angle and a couple of sides. We also have a way to calculate the sides themselves, the actual magnitude the length of any particular line, okay? But we need other information, okay? We need, in all cases, we need two things. So the beauty of a right angle triangle is we need two pieces of information, and from that, we can acquire all six pieces of information, the three angles and the lengths of the three sides. Okay, really five pieces of information because one of them is a 90 degree angle, right? But the ratio of sides helps us compare back and forth, angles, sides, so on and so forth, there's one more equation that we need that helps us find the length of the third side if we know two sides. And this is, check my spelling, Pythagoras came up with a theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, okay? And the Pythagorean theorem says, And let's give our three sides some labels, okay? Um, and we'll just, we'll call this A, and we'll call this B, and we'll call this C. And the Pythagorean theorem just reads like this. 
a squared, so we take this value and square it, plus b squared, so take this value and square it, equals c squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, We can take this square, bring it across the equal sign so we can isolate for c, because ultimately that's what we need to do is calculate for a side. So if I wanted to know what does c equal, well c equals the square comes across the equal sign becomes a square root a squared plus b squared. Now a little bit of caution when you're using your calculator because all of our work is going to require a calculator. Part of your task, part of your challenge is going to be able to know how to use your calculator. If you want to plunk that into your calculator to ask the question and just get an answer, you probably had better remember to include those brackets to make sure you get the order of operation correct. Okay, that's a good intro. The next lesson should be another short one. I'm going to just talk about the ratio of sides a little bit more. What is a sine function actually calculating? What is it looking at? What is it doing? And then we're going to move on to more fun stuff.